Hey guys, it's Carl. Welcome back to another Budget Tech episode. This is the first of the summer in 2022. I'm actually going to WWDC tomorrow or by the time this video is live. So a lot of the stuff will focus on maybe some of those accessories because it's impossible to get an item under $50 from Apple, but the best part, you can win one of the items from today. I'm still dealing with a lot of the spam of YouTube, but just leave a comment, but more importantly, follow me over on social, Instagram, as that's where I usually DM the people, and one of these items is on the way. We'll get to the first one, which you can kind of see off to here. It's obviously not a new phone. These are the new 13 slash 13 Pro in the new green colorways, but the first thing that I do for every single phone, not just iPhones that I get, is stick this on, which you can't probably see right here, but it is a screen protector. I am someone that always rocks my phones naked, probably because I get a ton and I just feel like they have a nicer feel in the hand, especially the 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, the stainless steel banding around the outsides, it feels so premium, it feels nice, but screens have become so prone to scratches. Apple in particular has something called Ceramic Shield, which makes their glass less prone to shattering when you drop it, but it's actually more prone to scratching because the actual glass is softer. So every time I just go over to my friends at Dbrand, I get one of their screen protectors. These ones are super easy to apply. They come with multiple in the pack. They even have this cool little squeegee tool you essentially just line up the glass and the stickers to a new iPhone, apply it, and just squeegee your phone out to get rid of any bubbles. And that's why I do prefer flatter edge screens. I know the S22 Ultra, even the Pixel 6 Pro has that slightly curved screen. You can never get to the end with a screen protector, but I guess that's the price you pay for curved glass. Keep your phones protected. Even my older 13 Pro Max, this one in Sierra Blue, the screen is still like new, even though the rest of the phone has a lot of dings and scratches, but if we do see a low key announcement of a new iPhone, I don't think we will at WWDC, make sure you stay protected. Speaking of green iPhones, and in particular, I think a lot of other brands have come out with green phones this year. Some other green accessories that you can grab from Apple, you can of course grab a silicon case or these green smart wallets or the Apple wallets. These ones just snap onto the back with MagSafe and the new generation ones, you can actually add those to the Find My app. So in case you misplace this somewhere, leave it um, at home, at a store, you can always find them on a map. So that's kind of nice. It's pretty much like a built-in AirTag, around 50 bucks. Once again, it is pretty tough finding accessories. And what they actually do really, really well is their refresh of accessories. They're essentially the same thing. They just come out in different colorways. So this is a new sport watch band. I grabbed this one in their newest colorway. This is in particular Northern Blue, which is right now replacing this current blue one. So I do have the Apple Watch Series 7. Once again, I don't think we're gonna get any new product in the iPhone or Apple Watch space. Usually we just get software updates, but since it is summer, new Apple Watch band, that's looking pretty nice. And like I said, I gotta give huge shout outs to Apple for consistently making me spend more money on new bands. And I love the fact that you can just swap these out really easily. So we'll just take this, switch that on, and we will quickly slap that on the wrist. That's looking pretty fresh. The blue on blue with the Series 7 in the blue aluminum. I did get Apple and once again, spending money under 50 bucks, but it's always nice to swap out your accessories. Onto this cool little package that Nintendo and actually Pokemon sent me, I think to do with their new games coming out in November, Scarlet and Violet. A lot of people are saying that it's gonna be the best game, a lot of open worldness. Nick is a big fan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's gonna be like an open world Zelda meets Pokemon. Breath of the Wild times Pokemon. I don't think to the scale of Breath of the Wild, but bigger than anything we've seen before from Pokemon. You heard it here first, bigger than anything we've seen. If there are any big Pokemon fans, I'm still an OG Pokemon guy. And I mean that by saying just the original 150, I kind of lost track uh, after they've come out with that, that. How many Pokemon are there, Nick? Uh, almost a thousand. Well, a little over a thousand if you include all the different forms. Too many. Too many to remember, but these are a pretty cool pair of headphones from Grado. When I did look online, these were over 50 bucks, but I do know that Prime Day is coming up. So if you can snag these for $50, especially if they still come out with these limited edition Pokemon ones, so you can see the little Pokeball and Pokemon Center times Grado Labs. That looks pretty fresh. If you're a big Pokemon fan and wanna rock some headphones, 
that's pretty dope. Speaking of gaming, under 50 bucks or around that $50 mark, the new Star Wars Lego game, you can snag that for $49 right now. So I am rocking that a lot on my Switch. It's just kind of fun to relive. I'm a big Lego fan, if you can't tell. Uh, I've just got Star Wars Lego everywhere. So it's fun to kind of play through the series again. A lot of uh, nice like dialogue, it's cute, it's fun, and something that I'll be playing uh, probably on the plane over to WWDC. One thing that I have upgraded actually from my Switch, even though I still have the OG, my memory card slot at the bottom has been filling up. So I just got this new one terabyte card. This one in particular is from Lexar. So I actually just got a couple so I can just kind of swap them out continuously on my Switch and any phones that do still support micro SD cards like the new Sony phone, which I just reviewed. One of my favorites, I still popped one of these in. Sadly, I don't think we'll ever see micro SD card support on an Apple device, but um, one can always dream. Speaking of SD cards, one thing that we'll be shooting with at WWDC for all of the content that you guys will see on the channel, we have upgraded all of our SD cards on our main cam. So recording A7S 3s and an A7 IV, a lot of camera gear that we'll be bringing because we just want to showcase what's uh, kind of coming out. Apple is notorious for being really cryptic on what is actually being released. I know that there's leaks, there's rumors, but even the day before, or as this video goes live, when we're in Cupertino at uh, Steve Jobs Theater, I still do not know what is officially being launched. So we just wanna ensure we have a ton of storage for all our footage. If there's anything that you guys wanna see, let me know uh, in the comments and we will try to record it all. And finally going through the rest of our tech travel pack, uh, looking at all the gear we'll be taking. Most of the stuff is over 50 bucks, but this caught my eye. Just kind of picked this up. This is the Ulanzi key light. So this is just a portable light. We're not too sure which shooting conditions we'll be shooting in, in case we are somewhere that needs a bit more brightness or some light. This, as you can see, boosts up and gives you some pretty, decent and adequate light. So this is around $50.45, I believe, if I remember ordering from Amazon. This is actually bi-color LED, so you can get from 2,500 Kelvin all the way up to 9,000. You can decrease the brightness with this little toggle on the side, and it does come with this little gel package, which I like, which gives you really, really soft light. Obviously, you can remove it and just have a bit more harshness. So depending on the look that you wanna get, and in terms of battery life, you're looking at 90 minutes on a full charge, and that's at 100%. And obviously, as you dial it down to say 20, 30% brightness, you can get longer. And what's nice, USB-C to charge, so you don't need micro USB, which is pretty antiquated. It's old and just nice to keep all of my accessories pretty, pretty modern. And this will just kind of hop into my bag. And what's actually kind of cool, which it's not what it's advertised for, this gel gives it a bit of cushion just because we kind of toss it around into our bag. So it's protected, it's safe, and it's just a little reliable piece of kit that we've added to the arsenal. There are a couple other things that we got into the studio around that $50 mark. So the first one is this new Death Adder V2 mouse. Technically isn't new, but just because it has this cool halo colorway on it. This one in particular, it isn't $50. If you don't mind getting a non-halo version, you can snag that off Amazon for 45 bucks. I don't care what any people say about wireless mice. Just give me a good old wired mouse. I know it doesn't look as clean, but the performance on it, you just can't beat a wired connection. So the V2 is significantly lighter than obviously V1. This is 82 grams versus 105. You've got eight programmable buttons and you can map those to five different profiles. It's pretty much just a mouse that works out of the box and I'd rather grab a Razer mouse versus one of those Amazon knockoffs that are still around 20, 30 bucks. Spend the $20 extra, get a known brand and uh, one that will work all the time. And once again, you can just stick this into a backpack. It's great to have as a second mouse, or if you're just really into gaming and don't want to break the bank, solid. The next item, we're keeping it in the Razer game. We're showing them a lot of love on this episode, maybe because they released their Barracuda Pro headphones. Those cost $250, not in this particular video, but these are just simple controller stands. The main function, they actually charge your controllers, whether that's PS5 or the Xbox, whatever you're deathly choices, or if you're even PC, whatever uh, you might jive with. But these also come in different color options as well. You can see we've just got the black on black, but I know on the Xbox side, you have more color choices. So these are just fun little ways to keep your controllers off the desk and you'll never need to replace batteries. I'm looking at you Xbox controllers. I know that PlayStation 5 controllers way superior. They're way better. It's how a controller should charge. 
but uh, for whatever reason, we still see Xbox on the AA batteries. Even though I just threw some shade at you, Xbox, still kind of love you guys. And I am giving away a month of Xbox Game Pass. This is just a little brick that I pulled out from my little Jenga block. Whoever snags this first, let me know. You've just got a month free Game Pass. Last off, we'll finish off with a couple things. I know I'm not really tech related, but I am getting into golf a lot more this summer and it's just kind of my new sport in general. I know that golf is probably one of the most expensive sports. Maybe only that in Formula One is probably more expensive, but uh, there are ways to keep things on budget. Uh, the first one I am Team TaylorMade. They help out uh, and send me all their stuff, but these head covers, should cost you less than $50. Maybe not this orange one in particular. There's ones that range between 20 to uh, $45. Just something to keep your putter covered in. When you think about it, you could just probably use a sock to do the same thing, but um, had to just keep things all orange. And even though I am sponsored by TaylorMade, I die a bit inside because I'm so shit at golf. When I shank a ball into the woods, into the water, those are like $4 TP5s that uh, I continuously lose. My heart just can't bear it. So I just bought this basic pack of balls. I think this is 15, 20 bucks. These are just nitro balls. I of course got them in orange. Once again, I just don't care if I lose these, if I shank them. If I lose 10 of them in a round, I uh, won't die on the inside. Obviously they just don't have the same feel or, or as nice as a, a TP5, but for just something that I'm driving off of or I'm just shanking and losing, just trying to keep things on budget and um, making the game a bit more accessible and just cheaper in general. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Like I said, we are heading off to WWDC. By the time you're watching this video, we should already be in Cupertino. So if there's anything you want to get covered. If there are any undercover leaks that you guys uh, want to see, let me know down below in the comments. Remember, you can win something. Be sure to sub. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. We're just recovering, or I'm particularly recovering from COVID as it hit me harder than I thought. Just getting content out uh, is uh, a bit of a slog, but I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for bearing with me, and we'll catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes. Peace!